I've been writing a lot of letters. Letters to individuals, to feelings, to the world. So my first letter is inspired by a walk I took not too long ago across the edge of a little village in Pakistan where a woman, well, she was treated worse than what an animal should be treated like. So it's called Dear Some Men. By the way, there's a strong emphasis on some. So Dear Some Men, maybe you want to look at us. So look. See what a woman looks like. Maybe you've never seen one before. Maybe the poison in your hormonal mind has blinded you with the tales and images you've been addicted to since an age too vulnerable to blame. Maybe you want to touch us. So touch. But after we open the doors with the keys of the words from our mouth and not by the breath of your hunger, we are not the afternoon snack or the buffet you've spent nights fasting for. We are women. Skin and nerves, eyes that whisper tales of how we cross bridges you wouldn't dare step on. Minds too deep to explore by those swimming in the shallow end. Brains that form paintings of comfort and care. Tissues that form beds for the babies you will one day hold. We are curves. Curves made with this ink that have written stories about how weakness was never our currency. We are not made for your apologies or your excuses. We are not the books that you can skim read till the good part. We a woman, maybe you want to touch us. Maybe you want to love us, so love. But giving love is not the same thing as loving. Loving is when the ocean follows you within the skies. Oceans so blue sapphires look gray. And all the waves dance in this pattern so unique physics would get jealous. And the wind, oh, the wind has this beautiful scent of vanilla and honey and hope and kindness. Maybe you want to hold us, so hold. But not the way you held your weekend job where you got fired for manipulating our words for the social mass that thrived on approval by your ego. We are not the collateral damage waiting to happen because of the war you're having within yourself. Our history may have placed us beneath the household roof, but we were never the damsel in distress. We are both the fire and the water. And the flavor you taste depends on how you treat us. We are both the strong and the soft, the late night shower singers, loving singers, warm winters. We are the ear to share your stories with, the eyes to share you with, the heart to share the world with. For we are women. Thank you. My next letter is to love. So does anyone here believe in love at first sight? A, one, <laughs> two, okay, yes. So imagine you're at the station and tick, your eyes click. Click like the sound of the hoof of a horse as it clicks against the ground, click. The horse is racing, racing as it shines so bright, so bright you forgot it was night and now everything's all right. Your heart, your heart can't take it. Tick. His heart, your heart beat in perfect harmony as your mind spin with destiny. Spin as you're warmed in a majestical microwave. But the timer is ticking. Our love will burn inside if it's left any longer. Tick. Our love is burning. Burning with smoke that shapes a perfect heart in the sky, a cloud. A cloud so white the moon got jealous. Jealous as it made the perfect crescent. 
across your face. Tick. The crescent, your smile, your eyes, your pupils are swallowing me into a black hole, into a parallel universe. Where the state of glee, the Norman lakes, lakes of golden sand below your feet so shiny, your reflection showed mine. And oh, the sand, each particle placed perfectly between my toes as I Sink just a little, not too much, but just a little, because that's how your love warmed me. Warmed me with shivers up my back, shivers that swayed in perfect harmony with the ocean. And then I felt it. This breeze that touched the edges of my body and whispered secrets to my soul. This breeze that whispered your name. Yet, I didn't know your name. But that's how much I felt you. Your silence name flew gracefully with the wind. Tick, your face. The perfect piece of art, each paintbrush stroke carved into a perfect Greek pot, made by the attic clay of your perfect attack. It's burning. Then I heard it. That silent sound played amongst the noisy street. That soundless sound that I loved didn't like that. That sound when the doors of the train closed. How you could have made the train but you didn't. The warden giving you that sorry look blaming you for the time you took. Well, that's the sound that I just heard. Only there won't be another sound, another train. Because I left it too late. Tick, the horse lost. Tick, the clay broke. Tick, the train's gone. Because you were my love. At first, tick, tick, tick. OK, <laughs> thank you. And the last letter is a letter to the world. It's how the world made me feel when I dive too deep in its consumeristic, materialistic society. It's called Dear Dunya, in Arabic, which means world. So Dear Dunya, the truth is, you didn't even give me a drop when I was in the desert begging, pleading, misreading, bleeding for your love. I craved you. My actions became your slave. I changed my image for you. I changed my opinions for you. I even became distant from him for you. But you, you became my biggest thief, taking me away from the breath of relief, covering my heart with the sound of falseness. First you took my eyes and scarred them with your images. Then you took my thoughts and molded them into your norm. And then you took my morals and made them lonely. Ever so lonely. Until I was scared to abide by them by myself. You made me fall in love with lust and everything the devil loves to discuss. You made me blind to what was unjust until my sins became addicted to emptiness and dust. But I guess it's easy to blame you, isn't it? A constant state of denial. Well, that's what the psychologists call it. For you didn't make me blind. I gave my eyes for you to bleed. You didn't give me desires. I filled my heart with greed. You didn't even look and I ran to you in speed. I came to the creation instead of the creator. And I didn't even breathe. Guilt. An emotion I never knew was such a blessing that would help me end to all this stressing and help me stop this worldly obsessing and help me start expressing what I was repressing because of you. Guilt wanted what I needed, God. So I called unto him deep in the last third of the night when darkness becomes the enemy of light and my whisper started to recite words he sent a while ago, words that took my forehead to the crown. God's love. 
His laugh fell like a never-ending stream of ripples that stemmed from the center of my forehead until the ends of my fingers and toes. Ripples that took me to a parallel universe where the state of glee, the norm, and the edges of the waves touch the edges of the trees and bears staring right back at me. The horizon, red, orange, yellow. And then I felt this breeze that went through every cell in my body and whispered secrets to my soul. This breeze that told me it's not about looks or desires of impressing others. It's not about pride or ego or having the most. It's about your intentions and who they're intended for. It's about your heart and who it's beating for. And most importantly, it's about your soul and who it's living for. One prayer. It only took one prayer and he came running. He listened with all the silence in the world. He forgave in a way I didn't deserve. I asked for a drop and he gave me the ocean. I asked for forgiveness and he gave me rewards. I asked for love and I found out he was loving me even before I was born. So never again, Dunya, will I be a slave of your worldly desires for this temporary love leaves real love so much drier. But he, God, lifts all the good higher. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa kena zabana. O Allah, grant us good in this world and good in the next and save us from the torment of the fire. Amen. Thank you. So to end off, I just want to inspire you to write letters to your friends, to your family, to your mother, to your daughter, to the world. Because every single letter is an idea worth sharing. Have a lovely day. Thank you.